YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back. Ranking defensive rookies based on their chances to win the Defensive Rookie of the Year award. We're also taking a look at some odds who we could bet on. Possibly I did the same video for offensive rookies. It's already up on the channel, the most recent ones. But starting with the top five, Dallas Turner does have the best odds to win Defensive Rookie of the Year, and that's who I will rank number one. I think a really good situation. He's already been really productive. I also think at the, you know, the same time him being really productive, he is an upside guy because he has the traits and he could learn to shed blocks a little bit better. But, um, you know, so explosive, so athletic, good piece for Brian Flores' defense, uh, and they'll blitz, so that'll kind of open things up for him a little bit. He drops in coverage a lot, which is huge for that, so he could get his hands on the ball, maybe get an interception or, or maybe two, um, you know, paired with Grenard. I, I, he should be pretty productive, pretty flashy for the Vikings, and the edge rushers usually have a pretty good shot. Uh, to win it so uh, could be Turner could be some of the other pass or edge rushers we talk about but another pass rusher but from the interior Byron Murphy the second who's my my top defensive player in the draft I'm going to rank number two and pretty good odds at plus 1300 for a really solid guy it's a little risky because the edge rushers tend to win corners as well uh, but Murphy is you know he gets production getting after the quarterback and he's really good stopping the run he was doubled a lot at Texas uh, maybe double less because he's playing alongside alongside some legit NFL players uh, on the D line. He's being coached by one of the better new defensive coaches in football. Mike McDonald is very smart, very good at working with the interior defensive lineman. Um, you know, is he going to get like a Matabuke amount of sacks? Maybe not. He could. It's a little bit different style of player. I think he's a better stop in the run. Um, he's going to be a bigger disruptor. He's probably going to be more impactful than. A turn, maybe a Dallas Turner, a debatable, I, I suppose. Uh, but it's going to need to show up in the stat department for him to win defensive rookie of the year. So that is the obstacle here. But I, I do think he'll be productive, maybe more productive than the plus 1,300 may say. And Leatu Latu, pretty good option too. You can rank any of these guys number one because he was the most po polished edge defender, edge rusher coming out. Like a little more polished than Turner, even though Turner was also very productive uh, because Latu is, I mean, he's a smart uh, d you know, defensive end that has – a full set of, of pass rush moves. Like you don't need to work on those things. He's pretty good shed, shedding blocks already. Um, so he's a pretty good bet to come in there and be productive. I almost want to rank him one, but they, they, the Colts did need a pass rusher, they, but they had solid guys already. They just didn't have that great guy. They're hoping Latu could be great, continue to be great like he was. Uh, but, you know, Abukum and, and uh, Quiddy Pay. Like these are pretty decent. They're not great, but they're pretty decent pass rushers. Uh, that are good for anywhere eight to uh, you know eleven sacks perhaps uh, in any given year. So it's like, do they? And Abukum's such a, like a specific type of player for Gus Bradley's scheme, like kind of his Leo pass rusher. So I, my bet is he's still got to play quite a bit, um, and he could drop in coverage pretty good at doing that. Latu's pretty good at doing that as well. I think he could play either side, um, but I think Pay kind of gets a decreased. Uh, Quiddy Pay gets kind of a decrease in snaps, but at the same time they 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 drafted him in the first round. They thought so highly of them. I think they're gonna be a little hesitant, like completely dropping somebody's snap counts. So and Latu's pretty versatile, so they actually we will see snaps with all three on the field at the same time. That'll be fun. But I think because of that, that they might be a little stubborn in terms of um, just giving him a full load or, or you know decreasing somebody's snaps as much as they probably should. Um, that drops him down a little bit. Otherwise, he'd probably be number one. Um, so that or, or two, one or two. So uh, then we got some defensive backs. Terry and Arnold, who was my number one corner in the draft, uh, he, he'll be starting for the Lions. They do have a pretty crowded room all of a sudden uh, in terms of, you know, at the top, adding Carlton Davis, who's, uh, I think, got to be a sure thing to start. Uh, and then Rake Straw should be, be, should be behind Arnold. Uh, you know, I loved Arnold, easily my number one corner. But actually, there's in terms of just pure talent level, there is not much of a drop off between Arnold and Rakestraw. It really, what it really came down to is is with Rakestraw is durability. You know, if he had the durability of Terry and Arnold, he'd been close to uh, somewhat close to his range of the draft probably. Um, so it, that maybe it's a little tricky part. But Arnold's going to be on the field. He also could play in a slot. I know Brant's going to play a lot there, but. Um, you know, he started to become more and more of a playmaker throughout his career as well. So I, I like Terry and Arnold, and I was kind of back and forth with him and Cooper DeGene. Cooper DeGene, pretty good odds there, plus 2,200. Like that, he may, may be worth a couple bucks too. 
Uh, but I, I like the gene for them. I mean, maybe you want to go Quinia Mitchell, who we'll talk about for the Eagles before him. But the gene, the fact that they're going to play him in the nickel a lot, he can play safety, and he can play outside corner. I don't think we're going to get a ton of reps from him at outside corner. Uh, but nickel, it's a little risky, though, because yeah, how many, how is he going to start? Is he going to be a rotational guy? But, man, I think we'll see him in, at, at nickel. And I think he'd be really good there in his, at safety as well. I think he could be at, where his strengths are inside the numbers, inside the hashes even. Uh, I think he'd be a really good playmaker in there. Um, you know, chances kind of just read the quarterback from the inside. And then he also returns kicks, returns punts. So that actually helps him uh, maybe kind of get in a rookie of the year perhaps, get some some bonus points. So uh, I like DeGene's chances. Again, a little risky because how much is he going to play? They had to have him, though. They traded up big time to go get him. They had to have him. I think they got a plan for him, obviously, uh, for multiple different spots. Rest of the guys here, Mikey Sainer still I love. I'd lo- I'm, I'm going to throw some a little bit on him because uh, that that's really good odds, plus 3,500. He is a playmaker. He finds the ball. He gets his hands on the ball. He, the guy feels like the guy's everywhere. Um, you know, high upside playing more and more from the slot. He's got to be starting for the commanders, I'd imagine. And Dan Quinn just... The, the playmakers that he has developed, like in his defense with the Cowboys, like Trevon Diggs, what was he known? Like a playmaker, getting his hands on the ball. And then Deron Bland, same thing. I mean, breaking records out there. Uh, Sainer still definitely a little bit different style of a corner, going to play more in the slot, but it's a guy that Dan Quinn had to have. He had to have him. This guy's going to get his hands in the ball. You know, so imagine if he does that at, at like a Dan Quinn corner type level. Like if he racks up a good amount of interceptions – that right away, like that alone gives him a decent shot at winning defensive rookie of the year. I almost want to put him higher. I almost the more I'm talking, the more I like it. You know, 3,500 is fantastic. Jared Verse should be pretty productive. It was an interesting pick by the Rams, but should be pretty productive But for the, for the Rams. Uh, plus 1,100, Quinion Mitchell, who is also a playmaker, gets his hands on the ball uh, as well. It's just, uh, you know, he could struggle at first when he's asked to press because he didn't do a whole lot of that. Toledo. Uh, and they do have a number of solid veteran corners that struggled last year, but they could be solid again. So uh, I actually put DeGene higher than him. Where I'm talking about Sanders, though, I want to bump him up one maybe. Uh, Nate Wiggins. Nate Wiggins I want to have higher. Uh, I just worry about him staying healthy all the all year because he is, you know, obviously thin. Um, you know, and so you worry about that alone. But then he's also had multiple injuries, even one pop up at the combine. And the Ravens, like for some reason, their guys can't stay healthy, especially in the secondary. Um, if I would fully trust him to stay healthy, I'd have him way higher because he is a playmaker. He does a good job reading the quarterback's eyes. And if he picks it off, there's like a decent shot. He's gone. So he might be getting some touchdowns as well. And he's playing with Marlon Humphrey and, you know, Kyle Hamilton out there. It's going to create for Nate Wiggins. So man, I want to rank him the top three, even top four. Uh, but how, how many snaps will he play compared to the other guys this year? And Braylon Trice makes the cut. The Falcons badly need an edge rusher. This was the best they got. Um, you know that this, they, from the from this off season, I suppose um, he could be he very well could be their best edge rusher. He he really could. He's very productive, impactful, like biggest moments at Washington. He could be their best edge rusher. It's just there's a shot they don't start him because they do have other guys that could play. So that's why it's a little risky. That's why it's plus five thousand. It's worth a couple bucks because he he could be starting week one and he could be their most productive pass rusher. Where other like. Turner, maybe Grenard's their best pass rusher. Latu, maybe Abukam or Pay. Um, you know, have more verse. Uh, Byron Young was very productive last year. So Trice maybe has a better shot of being the team's best pass rusher compared to the other those other guys. And then some other ones I had to list. Edger and Cooper. Did you see an off ball linebacker winning rookie of the year? Not really. But you think about Edger and Cooper with the Packers. He's going to start. And this is a guy that's really good at blitzing. Hell, you can even put him off the edge at times if you want to. He's pretty good in coverage. So we, as a linebacker, he's going to get tackles. He's a big time blitzer. He's pro- he might get some sacks. He's going to get pressure. And as a guy that's pretty decent dropping in coverage, he might get his hands in the ball. So if you combine those three things. It's like, okay, he's filling the stat sheet out. He could win it. It's just kind of weird seeing an off-ball linebacker win. Max Melton, I think, will be the best corner, believe it or not, on the Cardinals. Um, I think he'll get reps mainly outside but also inside. Very athletic, get his hands in the ball. Um, So he has a decent shot as well. I'm a big fan of Max Melton. Cole Bishop of the Buffalo Bills, 13,000, plus 13,000. It's a little scary because right now, Micah Hyde's saying he's either playing for the Bills 
or he's not playing at all. So the Bills could sign him, and that would mean Cole Bishop, Micah Hyde, Mike Edwards, Taylor Rapp. Somebody's going to decrease their snaps, um, you know, so that that could hurt Bishop's chances. Uh, but I do think you could play him with Hyde because I think Hyde's more of a free safety. Bishop, to me, is a strong safety that could play free safety. Um, you know, so that, that's a tough part. But Bishop is such a good fit in the Bills' zone defense, but he can play man. He can man up on tight ends. This guy is a warrior down in the box. Like, he can blitz. He's going to get sacks probably. He's going to get pressure. He's a he's really good reading the quarterback. Um he can drop in coverage. He's pretty instinctive. He could get, get his hands on the ball. Uh, you know, so I, I was very high on Cole Bishop. I'm extremely high on him and that Bills defense. It's a really good fit. I ranked DeGene as a safety because I thought he was a safety nickel guy. That's what he'll be. Uh, so I ranked him one. I had Bishop actually number two. Um, but if you're not counting DeGene, Bishop was number one. You know, cause Some people want to call DeGene a corner, which he might be strictly a nickel corner. We'll see what the Eagles' plan is. But Bishop... Plus 13,000, pretty ridiculous. Um, I, I think he can get sacks. He's going to get tackles. He's going to get his hands in the ball, kind of like an Edger and Cooper situation, even though they're different positions. But Bishop, he's in the box. He's almost like this hybrid linebacker, you know, like a box safety slash linebacker that's pretty freaking athletic, um, you know. So uh, those are my rookie of the year, guys. And, yeah, the more I talk, you know, it happens to me sometimes. I like Sainer still a lot. Nate Wiggins I like a lot if he could stay healthy. Um, if I, I wish we knew how many snaps lot two is going to get, like Turner's going to get a ton. Turner's going to get a ton. He's really flashy. He's already productive. He can drop in coverage, get his hands in the ball. He's going to Mike, excuse me, Brian Flores, his defense. Uh, so I think most people probably have Turner number one for those reasons. Um, so there you have it. We, we did the same thing for uh, offense. That was the most recent video, so check it out. Let me know your rankings or who you're betting on in the comments. Always uh, love to see those and see if, uh, we can, um, you know, convince each other to uh, who who to focus on, you know, for for this year. But it's gonna wrap it up. Links, important links, pin in the comments. Sponsors, uh, our Twitter, very important to follow uh, right now. But that will do it for this one. Thanks everyone for watching. Goodbye.